What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about one of my favorite procedural texturing add-ons for Blender. I'm super excited to talk about the new version of Fluent Materializer that's out now. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So you can download the new version, version 1.1 at the Blender Market. I will link to this page in the notes down below. And um, I just wanted to make a video talking through some of the new features contained inside of this new version of Fluent Materializer. Note that if you purchase the previous version of Fluent Materializer through the Blender Market, you can download the new version just by going back and visiting the market. So let's go ahead, let's jump over into Blender and take a look at some of the features. We're gonna use their shader ball example scene, which is a great scene for practicing with Fluent Materializer. So remember that this add-on works by going into the shader editor and using these customized nodes in order to um, basically combine different materials. You can do things like combining materials in order to make dents and scratches and other things like that. And so the first new thing contained inside of this new version is the layer connector. And so basically how that's going to work is you're gonna be able to select a layer and then a mix layer. And instead of having to go through and drag all of these in um, one by one for the different nodes, if you have a layer that's in here that's not connected, you can just tap the F key and there's a little chain button right here. That's going to automatically connect your layer to your mix layer so you don't have to go through and set up nodes individually anymore. So you can see how that set up the secondary layer in here with, with all of our dents that are going to be on this object really quickly. So in addition to the layer connector, there's also a function in here now where if you select two layers like this, so I did a click and then a shift click, and then I tap the F key to pop up the fluent window, we've now got the ability to swap those two layers. So now this is smart enough to know to swap the inputs right here. So notice how when this swaps the inputs, this gives us a completely different look than we had in here before. All right, so next I want to talk about one of the cooler new features contained inside this new version, which is the ability to add decals. And so the ability to add decals is massive for two different reasons. First off, because it just is a tool for adding decals now. Um, but second, because you can use the layer stacks in here um, and it's actually going to apply the wear that we have inside of our model to those decals. So the way this is gonna work is you can just type the F key right here. Notice how there's an option down here for decals. And so if you click on the option for add, you can go find a decal and bring it in. So let's say that I wanted to bring in one of these shape decals. So I'm just gonna bring this one in right here. Well, notice what that does is that adds an empty over here. And you can move the empty around by tapping the G key right here. Um, if this isn't locking to your surface, you can hold the control key in order to make it do that. For me, it is, so we're not gonna worry about it. But then what we can do is we can select our object Notice how that adds a decal object right here. Well, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to want to add another layer. So we're gonna tap F, just add a new layer right here. You wanna plug the color into this new layer and you wanna plug the mask into a mix layer node right here. So I'm gonna drag the mask into the mask. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna mask this so that our decal is now moving around in here. And we're just gonna select our empty that this created and notice how we can move this, but we can also scale it down like this. So notice how I can use this in order to place this decal. I can also rotate it and scale it on my surface just like this. And it's linked to this surface, meaning you can adjust it. Um, you wanna be a little careful around these edges, obviously, um, but you can make those changes really easily. You could also go in here and adjust the color of the decal. So um, you could drag the color into our color and our mix layer node right here. Then also, if you wanted to, if you didn't wanna drag the color in, what you could do is you could just deselect this and then just pick your own color using the color slider right here. So it's really up to you. That's gonna depend on what kind of decal you have in here. All right, and so, so far, yeah, that's great because you can add a decal in here, but what's really cool about this is let's say we added a grunge map to this decal. So we're gonna click on add and we're gonna drag our result into our mask. Well, notice what we can do is we can use this to actually um, grunge out the decal shape itself. So you can stack these different effects on top of this in order to make this look worn or something like that. So um, there's a lot of value in being able to add decals now using this tool and to use it in the workflow for procedurally making it look worn in your scenes. It is worth noting there's also a decal mixer node that you can add in here. And um, basically you can find that by tapping the F key 
and clicking on the mixer button right here. But what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to drag multiple different decals in here. So you can use this to have a bunch of different decals in your scene. Notice how for this one, I'm not taking the color and plugging that in. I'm just using the color overall value on the right hand side in order to adjust these decals. Um, but you can also have colors in here. But then I'm able to take this grunge map that I have and plug it into both of those. So I can apply grunge to both of these decals on my surface and make them look worn at the same time. So if you do have multiple decals in here, you can use a decal mixer um, so that you don't have to create multiple different mix layers over here as well. All right, so the next tool, actually the next couple tools are things that I'm massively excited about because what they do is they give you the ability to actually control where your imperfections go, right? Like up till now, everything's been a little bit procedural and it just kind of felt like it kind of goes where it feels like. But there's a couple new masking functions that really give you the ability to control where your imperfections go. So what we wanna do is we want to tap the F key and what we wanna do is we wanna add a local mask. And so what a local mask is going to do is it's gonna work a lot the same way that the um, decal worked in the sense that it's gonna place an empty align to the surface. Remember, you can use that control key to make it align to the surface if it's not doing that automatically. But you're basically creating a point in here, right? Well then, if we go back to our settings, notice how there's a local mask node that's added. Well, what we wanna do is we wanna add a new mix layer node. So I'm gonna add mix layers right here, and we wanna drag the mask into the mask right here. Well, notice when it does that, we're just getting this big orange look, right? Or whatever color we have selected in here. Well, if we select that empty that we created and scale it down, notice what this is actually doing is this is giving us a local effect on our shader ball, right? So it's basically giving us an area on our shader ball that we can move around so we can rotate it, we can scale it, we can do whatever we want with it. But this gets really powerful if you add an imperfection mask. So let's say I was to add a grunge mask right here and drag my result into my texture for my local mask. Well, what that's doing is that's adding a grunge map right here that you can move around, which isn't something we had previously. So now notice how that grunge map is gonna get applied wherever I place my empty. So I can use this um, in conjunction with mix layers to start adding grunge and damage wherever I want in my scene. So I can place this grunge. I can also adjust things like the contrast. So if I adjust my contrast up or down, notice how it's giving me different results. You can also adjust the scale along the X and Y to adjust how long or short this is. And then notice again, if I rotate this mask or this empty, the mask is being applied differently. So we can use this to actually come in here and customize how our damage is applied to our surfaces. And then from there, you can make whatever adjustments you want, right? Then it's just working the same as everything else in Fluent Materializer. So now you have actual control over where this damage goes on your surfaces using these new settings. All right, so another super cool function is the ability to paint textures. So if I was to select my mix layer node right here, tap the F key and add a paint right here. Notice what that does is that adds a new mask in here that I can use in order to paint on the surface. So what that's going to do is that's going to let me to paint an area in where textures are going to be applied. So if I was to add something like this, just something really simple. So we're just going to color this in a little bit. Um, and then we were to plug our BSDF back into our surface like this, notice what that's done is that's basically added a mask in here where we can set the area where this is masked in. And again, notice how this is just acting like a simple color right now. But if we were to add like a grunge mask, for example, to this painted mask right here, so drag our result into our texture, notice how it's only gonna apply that grunge mask in areas where we have the, the um, painted mask in our scene, right? So the grunge is only being applied in this area. And then if you want to adjust it, you can tap the F key. There's a button right here that'll take you back into the edit painted mask mode right here. And so we can edit this. One of the things I like to do is unplug the grunge map or the grunge from this mask while we're doing this, um, just so we can go back in and make changes, but we can use this in order to add. So you can click and drag in here. You can also hold down the control key in order to remove the material. 
So let's say we took our strength up to one, and we want to get rid of a bunch of this. We could paint that out really quickly, like this. So another thing that you could do is you could also target some edges in here. So for example, I'm gonna bring this down. Let's say we were to paint along the edge right here, maybe bring our strength down a bit. But if we were to paint along the edges, we could, dig, we could dictate edge wear in certain areas using this map as well. So once we're done with this, we'll just drag our uh, BSDF back into our surface so that we can see this. And we can drag our grunge back into our mask. But basically, this is set up where we can actually paint in these different maps in our scene using the painted mask feature in this new version. All right, so this next one is interesting to me. Um, I'm trying to figure out how much I'm actually going to use it. I think there's some benefits in here, which we can talk about in a second. But basically what this will do is, let's say that I had a singular image. So let's say I was to add a concrete image, right? So this is just a singular image right here. And so if I was to plug it into my base color, it would look something like this. Well, if we take this whole, if we take this image texture node and we click on the option for image extractor, notice how this changes to a different kind of node. Well, what this does is this basically takes that and it extracts maps or it generates maps for things like your metallic, for your roughness, other things like that, that you can then plug in here. So basically what it's doing is it's taking a singular image and it's making it it's making it into an image with those different maps. So if you tab in here, right, it's taking the image and it's generating a metallic, it's generating a roughness, it's generating a normal map in here, as well as you having the ability to adjust things like your scale. So let's say we wanted this to be smaller. Whoops. Let's say we wanted this to be bigger like this. You can see how this is allowing us to do that. And obviously because this has like stripes in it, um, it looks a little bit weird on the surface, but we're gonna go ahead and go for it just for this example. Well, I think the benefit to this is that you can combine it with other layers now. So what we can do, right, is we can take that image and we could combine it with, let's see, we were to add a mix layers right here and drag all of these in here. So we've got our material plugged in here, but then we could add a grunge texture or some of the other textures in here. So maybe like a gradient or something like that. And again, obviously I shouldn't have picked something that's more linear, but that's okay for what we're doing right here. Well, then we would just plug this mask in right here. And that gradient texture is gonna allow us to add like a washed out look to this on the bottom. So I'm gonna make this a white color. We're gonna adjust our Z value up a little bit. But notice what this does is this allows us to take that texture and combine it with our wear on our grunge masks. So this allows us to incorporate basically image textures into this workflow with Fluent Materializer, allowing you to add wear to images really quickly. All right, and then finally, we've got the ability to not only bake um, our textures, once we've got these set up the way that we want them, but we, can, but we can also adjust the resolution of those textures. So if we tap the N key over in the shader mode on the left-hand side of the page, notice how there's a fluent tab over here that allows you to bake different things. So for example, if you go into your bake PBR, that's going to basically show you that it's going to export these particular PBR maps if you click on this button right here. There's also an option in here for baking your different masks. And the one that we're really gonna focus on right now is the ability to adjust our map size. So if we look at our bake settings right here, what this is gonna allow us to do is this is gonna allow us to select our map size. And so when I first did this, I had it at 8192, which is way too big for what I need, um, especially if you're gonna export this like a game engine or something like that. It doesn't necessarily need to be that massive. Well, we now have the option, or we have the option in here to adjust this to different size. So whatever size you select, be that 1024 or 2048, it's going to then bake the maps and save them into a folder. So for me, for example, um, my object is inside of an assets folder, but it put them in a textures folder right here, and it was able to bake these out. So I've got my color map, got my metallic map, 
I've got my normal map and I've got my roughness map. And those are all ready to go so that you can bring them into another software. So for example, I'm using an import software for SketchUp. So I was able to import this model and use the texture maps from this object in order to set up my texture in pretty much exactly the way that it looks inside of Blender. So I'm able to take this and it's already got all the mapping set up and everything like that. So it imports onto this model really nicely. So now it's pretty easy to bake your materials for export to other softwares using Materializer as well. So I've been a massive fan of this add-on since before this new version, but this new version really takes it to the next level with the decals um, and then the painting of the masks and other things like that. I just think that really takes this to the next level for procedural texturing. Um, we can talk more about this with some more specific tutorials if you guys are interested, so leave a comment down below and let me know. I will link to the add-on on this page, but as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.